Okay, everybody, I am back with, I guess this would be video number two. Um, I just finished cutting open that solid knife. So it was together like that. So in the previous video, I showed you how to cut them all apart. So now I'm going to show you. So remember the inside of it, it's all cruddy and stuff like that. But we want to flatten it all down first. So, and I do that right here. And I have Suzanne's uh, flattening device mounted onto the Arbor Press. This is from the new 3D uh, bender kit that she gave us, or we bought from her. So anyway, what I do is I just match it right up along the edge here. And all I'm doing is I'm coming down and I am just flattening this. So the entire edge of it, I'm not cutting anything away because I'm going to show you that in a few minutes as to what I do with it. So I'm just going around and you want to be careful because you don't want your metal bending down underneath it. You want everything to stay on the exterior of it. So I'm just going through and I'm just flattening the entire piece down through. It's, it's not much. Like I said, these the, the, the solid ones are a lot thinner metal than what the hollow ones are. So this is pretty easy to bend around. Like I can bend it no problem with my fingers. They're very, very lightweight. So there is what it looks like flattened. There's what it was prior to. So we'll get this other one flattened down as well, and then we will go to the next step. There is so many things that you guys can do with these. Um, I've been, like I said, I've been doing these for quite a while now, um, and I kind of felt, well, I should be sharing. So hopefully you will share your pieces as well. I encourage you to. All right, so we're just going to keep going right down through there. Same thing. So I've got both sides flattened. All right. So let's get it all flattened down there. Okay, so there's my second one. So now I'm going to show you what I use to clean it all up. So I'm going to pause you again. Okay, guys, I'm back. So basically what I'm doing is, again, I have my Dremel, but I've put, it's the gray wheel attachment. It's the rubber gray. And all I do is I take my piece and I'm just going to be grinding it, kind of cleaning up all of that stuff that's in there. So sorry for the noise once again. So, as you can see here, the difference. So, I'm going to clean that up. So, hopefully, you can see that. So, that tip of it is starting to clean up. So, I'm going to continue doing the other side of it. It's very dirty, very, very dirty. But you got a lot of cement, you got a lot of crap that's in there. So I do that, and then I take, what is this? My steel wool. All right, take a piece of steel wool, and I just go in and I just give it a good cleaning. So once you get these all cut out and everything, they're gonna be all tumble cleaned anyway. But you want to get as much as you can off of it now. So there's still some tip on there, so you're going to have to grind it down a little bit more. But if you can see the difference of the before and the after. So how much they changed, how much it cleans it up. So anyway, um, I'm going to continue. I'm going to get this one cleaned, and I'll be right back. 
Okay guys, so I'm back. So I have taken these and I have flattened them and I've cleaned them. So like I said, I took the, the rubber gray disc to it and cleaned off the back sides of them. So they're not that bad. Like I said, they still have to be tumble cleaned as well. And then I took my steel wool, I think it's quadruple or triple aught um, steel wool, and I just cleaned them all up. So now, what I said in one of the other videos is this section in here, there's no pattern. So what I do to it then is I take them and I add the pattern to it. And that's what I have set up right here. This is a rolling mill plate that I have clamped onto a bench block clamped onto my bench. So then what I do is, because you don't have to have a rolling mill to use these dies. You can still use a ball peen hammer and you can do it with a pusher on top of this, whether it be tin foil or lead or whatever, but I just do it directly onto it. So I'm gonna make some noise here. Hopefully my camera won't fall and I'll show you what I've done with it. I told you my camera would fall. Okay, let's try this again. Hopefully it won't fall on the floor. All right, I'm just hammering. I'm not taking it down to where my pattern is on it. I'm just hammering the voided area. So, as you can see, there's now texture pattern onto that area of it. So that when I go to cut this stuff all out, then I still have these sections that I can cut out other pieces of. So I'm just going to deepen this a little bit more. You can put it through the rolling mill if you want, but I would take, I would cut it off at the pattern because you don't want to be rolling your decorative pattern, but just, you know, like you can do whatever you want with it. This is what I do because my rolling mill, the handle is broken off. And this work hardens it as well. Okay, so as you can see, I have lots of pattern on there. All right, so now I'm going to set up for the next section. Okay, in this section here, I talked to some people, they don't understand what I'm talking about, about pancake dies. Um, when I take, this is what you call a pancake die, and I cut out my knife handles, spoon bowls, all kinds of different things with them. And this one here I'm going to show you. So this is a little flower. And I've stuck a knife handle into it. And it's going to show that pattern on the flower. So you can use a hydraulic, and they recommend a hydraulic press is definitely the go-to on this. But again, I don't have a hydraulic press. So I did some research on it. So I have it a bench block, a metal bench block on top of the base of the arbor press. Then I've placed my pancake die and my metal down inside of it. And then I take another bench block and I'm gonna completely cover the entire shaft of this, just like that. I'm sandwiching it together. So then I bring my, now I do not do this on Suzanne's new system. This is an old system that I had prior to, and I will show you, see the head of my ram? Because I, this is my hammering ram. Um, my hammering, I guess, arbor is what it is. Um, I do all of the, my stamping and everything all on this. So all I do is I put it in, so my, my ram is directly right on top of where that die flower is. And I pull it, my handle down, I hold on to it, and I'm using, I guess this is a 20 ounce hammer. And I'm going to hit the top of my ram until it goes through. All right, so I've got to do about three or four punches. Then I shift it. Then I do it again. I better get a better holding system for this. 
Okay, let's try this again. All right, so we're going to hammer it. I'm going to open it up and just have a look at it and see if it is through. So I still have some other areas to go through it, so I'm just going to keep going with this. Like I said, a hydraulic press is your best option for this. But this is doable. So I'm not quite through, but it gives you an idea of what you can do with the, the plates. Now with the flowers and stuff like that, there's a lot of more intricate detail with them. So we still have some areas to go with it. So then what you do is you, I just take a little hammer and I punch it back through. And there she goes. So now that's going to show you a little wee tiny flower. This guy's a little bit stubborn. He kind of curls up. And that's I mean, with the intricate detail of some of the flowers and stuff like that. It shows you the little burrs. If I can get this. There's little tiny burrs. So they just have to be filed away. So that is one way of cutting these out. And I use these pancake dies on my spoon bowls. Um, you just want to be careful with the thickness of what you're doing. Again, Hydraulic press is your best option for this. Okay, uh, the next piece that I would do is I do the same system. With my other dies. So these are the angled hard dies. To get this guy out of the way, I do the same thing. It's set up here. So I'm going to take, whether it be the decorative part up in here that you want to cut out a heart from, or whether it want to, you want to do it on this area here. So I'm going to just show, quickly show you this. So it's just one of the knife handles. And let's get it all flattened out. So it's going to go in there. All right, so I'm going to get it all up into there and then put it into here, get my corresponding die. And I do wax these as well. So I get it in place, get it all lined up first before you get this into here. Same thing. I use my ram. If you are using a hammering one, just tighten it all up first. So you've got no loose areas of it. All right. Let's get this lined up properly. I've got, got a lot of glare down here in my basement, so. All right, so that's in place. And I use a little cushioning, because when my die goes through there, I don't want it hammering directly onto the metal. Hold it in place again. Through. Three hits and I'm through. And there is my little tiny heart. So I know it's quick kind of going through all of these guys, but it's giving you an idea start to finish. So I can do my dies, and again, I do it on here. I do my pancake dies. There's lots of variations and options that you can do with all of this stuff. So I hope that this video has been entertaining at least. So um, don't know what else to tell you guys. Get at it. And I want to see some of yours. I have blessed you guys with my video. I want to see some of the stuff that you've been doing with this. This is an educational uh, forum that Suzanne has put out for us, and I truly appreciate it. I know we have a lot of new people on here that aren't sure of things, so we need to be sharing and educating them as, as well. So anyway, take care. Hope this helps. Bye.